वेलकम लर्नर्स आई एम डॉक्टर पवन कुमार असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर स्कूल ऑफ साइंसेज इंदिरा गांधी नेशनल ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी सो टुडे वी शेल डिस्कस अबाउट द डी एफ एस एलगोर थीम द वर्ड डी एफ एस स्टैंड फॉर डेफ्थ फर्स्ट सर्च सो डी एफ एस एलगोर थीम कंस्ट्रक्ट्स स्पेनिंग ट्री इन अ गिविन कनेक्टेड ग्राफ यू you must be familiar from uh, your earlier sessions uh, that there is another algorithm called bfs algorithm that is bread first search algorithm and that also constructs a spanning tree in a in a given connected graph so what's the difference between the dfs and bfs algorithms so we shall see here and how to find a spanning tree using dfs we shall explain through examples so the idea behind the dfs algorithm is that given any vertex the algorithm goes deeper and deeper in the network and tries to explore the vertices and once it has reached to the end of uh, to the end of a path that is a path which is not extendable then it goes back to its parent and then from its parent it again tries to go deeper in the network in the graph so with this way uh, the algorithm finds a spanning tree uh, let's uh, uh, look at a graph to before formally seeing how the algorithm works so consider this graph let us start with the vertex v1 so we are treating the vertex v1 as the root and we shall explore the graph through the uh, root so first we visit the neighbors of v1 right so the neighbors of v1 are v2 and v4 so let's visit the neighbor v2 so we start uh, uh, from v1 and go to v2 right and now from v2 to v cell visit the graph uh, to uh, the vertex v3 right note that this is the main difference in the bfs algorithm suppose uh, you have to apply the bfs algorithm on this graph then after visiting after exploring v2 you would explore v4 right because v4 is also a neighbor of v1 but here after visiting v2 we are not going to v4 directly we shall first visit all the neighbors of v3 and then we we shall go to v4 and v4 now similarly uh, if there are any other neighbors of v2 uh, then we shall go back to that neighbor only after exploring all the neighbors of v3 right so in this way that means that any current vertex we explore all its vertices all its neighbors and then we we go to uh, the neighbors of its parent so let's look at uh, okay the, now let's uh, visit the vertex v3 so we go like this and then from v3 we go to v4 and then v5 v6 v7 v8 now we cannot extend this path further right we have, we uh, this path from v1 to v8 is non extendable so now we shall go back to its parent that means the parent of v8 which is v7 so now there is no unexplored vertex an explored neighbor of v7 so we shall uh, go back to the parent of v7 which is v6 now v6 has some unexplored neighbors so we shall visit those so v9 is one such unexplored neighbor so we shall now visit v9 after visiting v9 we shall visit the neighbors of v9 so which is v10 and of course there is another neighbor v12 but we are visiting first v10 let's say 
and then from V10 we visit the vertex V11. Now we cannot go further, so we shall go back to the parent of V11 that is V10 and from V10 since there is no unexplored neighbors of V10, we shall now return to V9 and now we shall see that there is a neighbor namely V11, V12 which is unexplored right. So, we shall explore V12 and now we shall go back to V9 again. So, one thing you must have seen that when we explore a vertex we, we shall use the color red and when we are backtracking that means when we are going back to the parent we are using the green color right. So, now after V9 now we have uh, explored all the neighbors of V9. So, we shall return to the its parent V6 since V6 uh, neighbors have also been explored. So, we shall return to its uh, parent V5 then to V4, V3, V2 and finally, we come back at V1. So, this is how the DFS algorithm works. Let us look at now this algorithm formally. So, the algorithm requires uh, two containers namely T and L, where T stores the edges of the spanning tree which is being constructed and L is a set which contains the order of the vertices as they are visited. So, apart from giving a spanning tree, the TFS algorithm also gives a vertex ordering of the graph. So, let us look at the algorithm. So, as an input it requires a connected graph G with a root R and as the output it prints or it returns the edges of a spanning tree rooted at R and a vertex ordering L. So, the first step is in the beginning all the vertices are unvisited right that means they are marked as unvisited and T and L are empty sets. And then the second step we call the subroutine DFS R and stop. So, that is the main uh, that is a, a main algorithm and now the uh, subroutine DFS is defined as follows. So, it just takes a parameter u which is a vertex in the graph and it marks u as visited and then it adds u to l. And then for each unvisited neighbor of v of u it adds uv to t and then we call dfs v again right. So, that means although we have to visit all the neighbors of u, but before that see the call dfs is made right dfs v is made that means before visiting all the neighbors of u that means remaining neighbors of u we shall visit first the neighbors of v right. So, this is how uh, algorithm work this is actually uh, a recursive procedure that means it calls itself within the after I mean with within the uh, routine itself before it stops. So, uh, let us look at an example. So, consider this graph uh, it has uh, 8 vertices. So, any spanning tree must have 7 edges. So, in the beginning the sets L and T are empty. Now, we start with the vertex V1 as the root. So, V1 is the root and now the neighbors of V1 are V2, V7 and V8 right. So, we shall visit let us say V2. So, we, now L contains V1 and T contains the edge V1, V2. So, now after V2 now DFS V2 is called right. So, we shall mark D2 as visited that means it is marked as red and one of its neighbors is 
chosen so let's choose the one neighbor v3 right and then v2 v3 is added to t and then call dfs v3 is made so that means now we shall visit the neighbors of v3 so let's visit the neighbor v4 let's say so then l contains v1 v2 v3 and now the age v3 v4 is added to t so t contains now the ages v1 v2 v2 v3 and v3 v4 now from v4 we call dfs v4 so now we choose a neighbor of v4 say v5 and then v4 is added to l and the age v4 v5 is added to t right and now after v5 we uh, explore v6 so the age v5 v6 is added to t and v5 is added to l from v6 we explore v7 right so v6 is added to l and now the age v6 v7 is added to t now v7 has only one unexplored age v8 so we explore v8 right so v7 is added to l and the age v7 v8 is added to t now we can see that there is no unvisited neighbor of v8 right so now we return to its parent that means the co to the vertex from where the call dfs v8 dfs was made so we return to the parent of v8 which is v7 and then since there are no unvisited neighbors of v7 we return to its parent v6 again v6 has no unexplored neighbors so v6 from v6 to we return v5 again v5 has no unexplored neighbors so we return to its parent v4 and then to v3 and to v2 and then finally we reach back to the root vertex which is v1 so this is how we have constructed a spanning tree using the dfs algorithm you can see that the dfs tree contains seven edges right one thing you must have observed is that the way we are visiting the nodes the neighbors of a given vertex affects the resulting spanning tree right because suppose for instance uh, after the root v1 suppose we visited the vertex v7 in that case the tree could be different from the one we have obtained right so the way we the order in which we visit the neighbors of a given vertex gives us or uh, determines the actual spanning tree to be uh, constructed let's look at one more example uh, look at this graph now uh, it has the word c is a b c d e f g h i n j right so let's start again uh, with the vertex a as the root and then we shall uh, call dfs a right so we shall now mark a as visited so and a is now added to l and then t contains uh, t is still empty so we shall now visit the neighbors of a so let us choose a neighbor so let's say b so now the age ab is added to t and the vertex b is added to l right so now from b we call dfs b right so b is marked as visited that is b is added to l and one of its neighbors is one of its unexplored and visited neighbor is chosen let this vertex be c so then the age 
BC is added to T and C is now the call is now we uh, call DFS C right. So, this means the vertex C is marked as visited that is C is added to L and then we choose a neighbor of C which is let us say D and so we call DFS uh, D. So, now the age C D is added to T and now D is marked as visited and we see that there are uh, two neighbors E and I of D. Let us visit now E. So, after uh, visiting E we see that the age D E is added to T and call DFS E is made right. Note that the other neighbor of D is I which will be visited once the DFS uh, E is returned that means the output of DFS E is over. So, now after E we shall visit its neighbor uh, H which is unvisited. So, we now come to H. So, H E H is added to T and now DFS H is called right. So, H has two neighbors F and J right. So, we shall now visit the vertex J. So, we shall uh, now reach the J and the age J is added to T and now DFS J is made right, but J has no unvisited neighbors right. So, we shall return to its parent that is H and now there are un unvisited neighbors of H say H F. So, we shall visit E that is we uh, call DFS G. So, now F uh, G is uh, added to L and the age H G is added to T. Now, from G we visit F which is the only unvisited neighbor of G. So, now F is added to L and the age F G is added to T. Now, F has no unvisited neighbors. So, we shall return to its parent that is G. Now, since G also has no unvisited neighbors, we shall return to its parent H. Now, H also has no unvisited neighbors. So, we return to its parent E. Again, E has no unvisited neighbors. So, we return to its parent D, but now D has an unvisited neighbor which is I. So, we shall now visit I that is we uh, reach DFS I. So, that means I is marked as visited that is I is added to L and the age D I is added to T. Now, DFS I is made. So, that means, uh, but D I has no uh, unvisited neighbor. So, we shall uh, return to its parent that is D and then we return to the parent of D which is C and from C to we return to its parent B and from B to return to its parent the root A. So, this is how we have constructed a spanning tree using the DFS algorithm. The spanning tree contains the ages A B, B C, C D, D I, D E, E H, H J, H G and G F. So, I hope you have understood this algorithm. So, this is all in this session. Thank you.